Womanjika, welcome sisters and brothers to this week's gospel reflection from a cold and wet Melbourne winter. I'm Barrow from the Melbourne chapter of God Squad and this week's gospel reading comes from Matthew chapter 13 verses 1 to 9, the parable of the sower. I'm not sure about how you get on with gardening. No doubt some of you will love it and spend heaps of time in your garden producing great crops and food. Others of you will hate it and it'll be like wrestling for weeds. Helen, my partner, spends a lot more time in the garden than me, and it's great seeing some of the benefits of her efforts. We love eating what we grow. Even I know, with my limited knowledge, that producing a good crop is all about the quality of the soil and how much effort we put into it. We see the role of the soil in today's parable from Matthew's Gospel, where Jesus teaches the crowd gathered around him on the edge of the lake. Matthew, more than any other of the gospel uh, writers, emphasises Jesus' role as a teacher, often with parables and stories. In fact, in chapter 13, today's parable of the sower is the first of seven parables in that chapter alone, and it also marks the beginning of Jesus' third major, major teaching unit in, Ma in Matthew's gospel. Uh, the chapter before, in chapter 12, we see Jesus yet again in conflict, conflict with the Pharisees, this time for healing on the Sabbath and expressing love and compassion over legalism. The tension and hostility towards Jesus has been building at the end and at the end of chapter 13, he will even be rejected by his hometown. Today's parable of the sower is a, is a common one and a familiar one to many of us and looks at some of those mixed responses to Jesus and his ministry. So I just want to offer some brief reflections from it now. The sower scattered the seed and it fell on four different types of soil. First of all, it fell on the path and was eaten by the birds. The second lot was, was, uh, fell on rocky ground where it had shallow soil and that didn't survive very long. The third lot of uh, seeds fell amongst the thorns and they grew up and they were choked by the, the, by the thorns and the plants there. And of course, the fourth lot was that that, that fell on the good soil and it produced a, hop, a, a great crop and a great harvest. Today, rather than highlighting the soil, I want to highlight the sower, who I reckon is the main character in this parable. The sower scatters a seed, and he seems reckless and careless and seems to waste much of the seed on soil that holds little promise of a fruitful harvest. He practiced what some people would call wasteful, yet others have called extravagant sowing. sowing. I want to suggest this is exactly what Jesus did in his time with those around him and what he does with us today. He invests in his time with his disciples who look unpromising and constantly misunderstanding him, often like us. He squanders his time with tax collectors and sinners, with lepers, with the demon possessed and other outcasts and outsiders, those who, who some consider are sitting on the pathway or amongst the thorns and he produces a bumper crop. In this passage, the good soil refers to someone who hears the word and accepts it. This is the one who produces a crop, uh, which he explains later in uh, verse 23. In Matthew's story, the, it seems that these are the least likely ones. Jesus tells the, cha the chief priests and elders later on in chapter 21, that tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. Later in chapter 25, in the parable of the sheep and the goats, the righteous bear fruit by serving the least of these. Even they are surprised, in fact, that they've been serving Jesus through this. He endorses extravagant generosity in sowing the word, even in risky places. It is not seen as good or efficient gardening methods. In fact, it's often seen as a waste of resources. Yet here today, as we've seen right throughout the Gospels, Jesus has a way of surprising us all by calling and including the least likely, uh, like you and I, prostitutes, tax collectors and sinners in order to produce a bumper harvest. So the invitation today is for all of us is to follow in the footsteps of our great teacher and sower by practicing ex uh, extravagant sowing, to share the love, compassion and grace of Jesus to all around us especially to those who are forgotten and excluded, especially to the last, the least and the lost, and not to just stick 
to the safe and comfortable places. So may we today be inspired, challenged and encouraged afresh by the risen Lord who calls us to follow him in unexpected ways into unexpected places in order to produce a bumper harvest. Amen.